So far, we have looked at the problem of uh, linear regression and we derived the uh, optimal solution W star uh, for linear regression. And then we said that we can look at a probabilistic viewpoint for linear regression and we said that the y given x will be some w transpose x plus 0 mean noise and derived the maximum likelihood estimator for w and we observed that the w star that comes from linear regression is exactly same as w hat ml uh, which comes from the maximum likelihood estimation, right. So, this comes from maximum likelihood. So, which gave us the idea that uh, if we assume that the noise is Gaussian, then that is equivalent to assuming that the error is squared error. So, then uh, we asked the question, what else is the benefit of uh, viewing this as an estimator? Uh, that is uh, w hat ml is an estimator for w and what, what other properties can we look at of this estimator that will help us gain some insights about this problem itself. And now uh, what we are going to look at is one nice property of this estimator which will give us some insights into you know extending the linear regression problem in a particular direction. For that uh, let us try to understand how good as an estimator w hat ml is. Remember there is some w and such that y given x is w transpose x plus some epsilon where epsilon we said is um, is a Gaussian noise with mean 0 and some variance sigma square. This is what uh, our assumption was. So, which means that for every x in our data, the y was generated using some w transpose x, some unknown but fixed w which we do not know and then adding a 0 mean Gaussian noise which means that the y given x itself can be thought of as a Gaussian with mean w transpose x and sigma square. This is what we have seen so far. Now, our w hat ml is trying to estimate what is this w, it is a guess for this w. So, now we can ask the question how good is w hat ml as a guess for the true w. Now, how can we measure this goodness? Remember w is some vector which is unknown but is in some d dimension, <coughs> right. So, where d is the number of features, so is w hat ml w hat ml is also in d dimension because it is an estimator for w. Um, however, w hat ml is derived out of an optimization problem that is we maximize the likelihood and get w hat ml as a solution of an optimization problem and this optimization problem involves data which involves x and y and we are assuming y is random that is y has some random component so the y is a random variable. So, if y is random, then the likelihood estimation estimator, the best estimator for w is also going to be random because it depends on y, right. So, it is it you are trying to see which w maximizes our chance of seeing all the y's, y1, y2 till yn and so uh, the w is going to be some function of uh, you know uh, the underlying y uh, and y because y is random, so it is w, right. So, now what could happen is that. Um, in if we if we try to understand w hat ml for some realization um, of our data points, let us say you have some data x1 to xn, uh, x1 y1 let us say till xn yn. Now, of course, y is random x we are don't, not assuming anything about x, y is random. Uh, now, it might be the case that the y's that we have got are, are not you know representative of the underlying w. In other words, um, we might have had a very extremely unlucky day that these noise values when you are computing y's, right. So, y1 is w transpose x1 plus some noise epsilon 1. Maybe this noise is too high, right. So, in our data that we get and so this y's are not really giving us enough information about w which means that if y's are very noisy, then the w that we are going to calculate is also going to be kind of bad. So, we cannot dis decide how good is our w hat ml with respect to just a single data set. Instead, we can ask well because y's are random, so is w hat ml, we can ask on an average how does our random w hat ml perform in estimating w. So, one way to capture this is by looking at the following quantity. We can we want a way to understand 
the goodness of w hat ml how good w hat ml is in estimating w so one way to understand this is to look at w hat ml minus w and because these are d dimensional vectors you can look at their um, norm squared right so when i say norm it's like the euclidean norm the distance between these two vectors uh, but now again because we cannot just look at one sam one data set and decide this we want to understand this on an average how does this happen which means we need to look at the expected value of this quantity what is the expected value well the expected value is the average expectation over the randomness in y that is it is as if one way to think about this is that let's say we create one data set uh, where the y's are derived random according to w transpose x plus gaussian zero mean gaussian noise now you calculate the w hat ml for this data set and see how far away w hat ml is with respect to w now you do the same experiment many many times and then average the distance between w hat ml's that you get with respect to the true w right so the distance squared now this average will slow, slowly converge to the expected value of this random variable right so this is one way to think about what we are trying to compute right so on an average where the average is over all possible you know data sets that you can get right so over all possible randomness in y uh, what is the average deviation of w hat ml with respect to the true w we can try to ask this right so this this um, is a quantity of interest for us um, i won't really derive this quantity uh, because i mean it's not too hard to derive this but uh, let's not go and derive this right now instead i'll tell you what this quantity is right so um, actually it's not too hard to derive this because uh, once you know what is the uh, quantity what is uh, w hat ml as a function of uh, x and y which we already know is just uh, uh, x transpose x x transpose we know that w hat ml is just x x transpose pseudo inverse x y right so this is something that we have already seen now y is the random part uh, and you can use the properties of uh, uh, y and so on to derive what this value is uh, but what i'm going to do here is just to give you the value um, those who are interested can you know try and actually compute this value for yourself it's a bit of uh, not too much of an i mean it's just an algebraic uh, derivation uh, so but what is this value this value turns out to be an interesting quantity and we'll see why it is interesting i'll first put down what this value is this value turns out to be sigma squared into the trace of x x transpose pseudo inverse or inverse right so both are okay <coughs> So, this is telling us something very interesting. The average deviation between your estimated w hat ml and w, the true w, is a product of two terms. One term is sigma squared, which is the variance of the noise that you add to w transpose x. Now, this variance should somehow affect our quality of w hat ml that is very clear right so because if i add noise if i add more noise which means that if i add a zero mean noise with a larger variance which means that i am confusing my w hat w transpose x value with more noise um, and so my quality should go down right so which means that the more the variance is the more the average deviation between w hat ml and true w would be right so the sigma squared remember sigma squared is just just the variance of the gaussian noise right so that we add to w transpose x so that should directly affect our quality of our estimator which is fine which is what is happening uh, but what this interestingly tells us is that it not only depends on sigma squared it also depends on the data features themselves right so it depends on the features via the trace of the matrix xx transpose inverse which is like the inverse of your covariance matrix right so we can even for simplicity we can just assume that this is an inverse that's still okay which which means uh, now it is not so now how depending on how the features themselves are related to each other 
will also affect our you know estimator's goodness right so it's not just the noise that y has with respect to you know w w transpose x plus whatever noise you add of course that's going to affect but that's not the only thing it's also how the features are related to each other which is an interesting thing to observe well there is some data generating process right so we are given the data and we are assuming there is this data generating process which is adding this uh, uh, gaussian noise uh, to our labels and then giving us the y's so we cannot change this data generating process which means that we don't have any control over sigma squared as such um, but then the features are given to us right so now the question is we cannot really touch sigma squared because it is some noise that gets added and then it is given to us uh, but we are given x and then the features themselves somehow affect the um, goodness of w hat ml so can we somehow tweak this or play around with this to get a better estimator which perhaps will have lesser mean squared error we don't know that if that is even possible but if at all it is possible it's going to be you know you have to touch this term because sigma squared is anyway out of question because that's a noise that is is you know in some sense you have to suffer that much can we somehow get rid i mean not get rid of can we somehow at least reduce this part or at least focus on this part it's the next valid question that we can ask and let's see what we can do with this